Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day 31. So yesterday we recorded the first part of a video on creating a paid social ad. That was part one. Today we're going to finish out that process with part two. So let's dive into our campaigns applet and we're going to pull up the ad that we began working on yesterday and we're going to finish it out. So we start off on our dashboard. We want to head over to our paid ads tab and you can now see here is that ad that we started yesterday and saved as a draft. Uh, we talked a few videos ago about the cost per mill, cost per click, cost per lead click. You can now see those stats here. Now, of course, there are no actual numbers because we haven't run the ad yet. However, these numbers would begin to fill in as soon as you began to run your ad. In order to finish out the ad, we're going to click on the three dots to the far right and we're going to choose edit campaign and it's going to pull up our ad. We're now going to focus on Facebook settings lead settings and duration and budget. So let's go into Facebook settings. We're gonna click on configure. This is essentially where you would connect your business page, the business page that you had selected for this actual ad. The next thing here, and this is really important, right? The difference between the Facebook lead generation form or site or landing page. The Facebook lead generation form is where you're going to actually be able to capture leads so when you choose Facebook Legion form and a consumer clicks on your ad, a pop-up happens that asks them to submit their name, phone number, and email. When they do, you get a new lead created within your contacts applet and the consumer gets to go to the website URL that you intended them to land on. If they do not fill out the information, then they are considered a click because they clicked on your ad. However, they would not be a lead because they're not submitting your information. Now it's important to note that if you choose the site or landing page option, they're going to go directly to the website URL that you enter down here. However, Facebook is not going to attempt to collect their information and you will not receive any leads on your ads. So be really careful here. I've had some people reach out and say, hey, I've run a few ads, but I haven't gotten any leads and I'm spending 20 or 30 bucks per ad. I'm getting a lot of impressions and a lot of clicks but no leads. Almost always when we do a deeper dive into those ads, it turns out that they use the site or landing page option and not the Facebook lead gen form. That's why this one is recommended. From here, you can see button label and you've got a few to choose from there. So learn more, sign up, contact us or apply now. You can choose any one of those and that's gonna change the button that shows here on your ad. And in addition, website URL at the very bottom here, this is where they're going to go when they submit their information or if you're doing direct to landing page when they click on the ad. So typically if you're advertising a listing, I would recommend that you go to your agent site, which we're gonna cover later on in the challenge in our consumer applet, and then find the listing on your agent site and put that URL here. If you're doing an event, Maybe it's the link to the Eventbrite signup or something along those lines. Maybe you're advertising Keller Mortgage and you're gonna put the URL for your actual Keller Mortgage site. Uh, several different ways, but this is where they're going to land. Um, make sure that where they land is where you told them they were going to land. So in our text, we talked about, hey, check out my newest listing, right? We didn't change the text, but that's what we would put. Oh, beautiful house. To see more photos, click here. Well, we need to make sure then that the landing page that they're being sent to actually has more photos and information about the listing, etc. So just make sure that's not a bait and switch, that the website URL is actually where you intended them to go. Moving a little bit further down, so audience is who is going to see the ad? Who has the potential, I should say, of seeing the ad? And you can see that the address is based upon when you select a listing the address of the listing. So I'm in Katy, Texas. However, it's showing Fort Collins, Colorado. That's because this random listing that we selected is in Fort Collins, Colorado. Now you can change where this ad is being targeted. So let's say I know a lot of people are moving to Fort Collins from, let's say San Antonio, Texas. I'm pretty sure that Fort Collins is a big military town and so is San Antonio. So if I type in San Antonio, Texas, you're gonna see this little dot starts happening I wanna start actually advertising this property in San Antonio because I know a lot of people are moving from there to here. 
Uh, for example, if you had property in Austin that you were looking to sell, you might start advertising it in California because a lot of people are moving from uh, Silicon Valley to Austin might be a great way to get more buyers and coming from California to Austin, they may have a larger budget to purchase homes with. So there's definitely some strategy as to where you target your ad. Uh, regardless of what city you choose, you also have a radius around that specific city that you can select. This goes all the way down to 15 miles and goes all the way up to 50 miles, five zero. So depending on how many mile radius that you are selecting, that's gonna change the potential audience that you have to see the ad. So you can see right now over here on the right hand side, it's giving us an audience definition. So if we went all the way up to 50 miles, we're currently at 1.8 million. You should see that update, that change. I don't know if that changed. And let's go back down to 15 miles and see if that changes. And it may just be having a little hiccup this morning. You never know. Um, so, yep, there it goes. So it went down to 1.4 million now that we're at a 15 mile radius. So obviously the smaller the radius, the fewer people see it, but they're gonna be also closer to the center of town. Your decision on how big of a radius you would like to decide, the default always sets at 20. However, in addition, if you choose to say, I don't wanna target just people around this city, I want to choose instead, or in addition to, specific contacts in my database. You do have that ability, and you can do that through the custom audience tab. So in order to create a custom audience, the first thing you need to select is to target your database. So if I choose target my database, it's first gonna ask me to select an audience. Now, if you haven't previously selected an audience, you would do that by creating a new audience. So create new audience will allow you to then name the audience, and let's just put all contacts. And then we're gonna come in and select a tag. Now we've got some tags that are already in here. I believe fictional character because all of our contacts, our fictional characters has been applied to all of our contacts. We're gonna go ahead and click on create. Now you might run an ad around a specific property and target just uh, sellers, just buyers. Maybe you're targeting everyone that lives in that neighborhood you already know based upon their address and their tag, several different ways that you can create this audience. So once we go and have all of the tags that we want to use, we can click on create and it's saying select a tag has no contacts. Okay, well, that's a little bit of a glitch. Pretty sure we have that on there, but we'll just go through, let's see if I can get one more to take. Let's say cartoons would take. <clears throat> there we go. So we now can select an audience and you can see we have four fake people in our database that have that cartoon tag and so therefore we can attempt to target these individuals. Now you can see already that this is not going to work. And if you click on this I, it's gonna say this will upload a custom list to Facebook and how you can create that audience. I will tell you that the guidelines that I have been trained on with regards to Facebook are that we need at least 100 contacts in this audience that Facebook recognizes. And Facebook recognizes your contacts by the phone number and email associated with them in command, matching either the phone number or email they have associated with their Facebook account. So as long as you have 100 contacts in this audience with an email that is the same email they used to log into Facebook with, then it would create the audience and allow you to target them. If just one of those 100 does not, then 99 wouldn't happen and you'll see the audience would actually fail. So if we were to run this ad, you would see that it would either turn red or turn green based upon the audience being successfully created or not. In my suggestion, you definitely wanna have more than 100. The goal would be 300 or more where possible. So try and create a large audience using tags that you can then target with ads. Again, this isn't required. You can just go back to target a custom audience and that would be the 20 people around. But let's say I just keep running ads in Fort Collins and I do this over a period of time, maybe six months or so, and I have now generated 150 to 200 leads in the Fort Collins area, well, in that case, I might be able to retarget them now because I'm auto applying a tag that says Fort Collins on each one of those people. Well, now I could go in and target my database and target all of those old leads with new ads. In addition, you've got some detailed targeting here. So you can come in and add specific interests that you believe might match the people looking for this property. 
Um, so there's an entire list of these. I mean, they just keep going and going and going. Um, two very popular ones to use for buyers and sellers, Zillow, Realtor.com. But there's also several that involve homes. So if you come in, there is home improvement, home equity and line of credit, home equity, home insurance, home repair, homeowner. I mean, all of these I might recommend would be good choices. Again, this is gonna narrow your audience, but we're now kind of shooting with a rifle versus a shotgun. I'm only looking for people that have one or more of these interests to see my ad. So we're gonna increase the quality, potentially decrease the quantity, and yet better leads are always better than not so good leads, right? So I would recommend kind of going through this list as well. Spend some time at some point understanding all the different interest groups and choose the ones that make the most sense for your specific ad. Next up, we've got lead settings. So I can click on configure lead settings. I can choose to automatically apply a tag to any of the leads that come in off of this specific campaign. So you can see that we have tags already here in our list, but let's say we wanted to create a tag for Fort Collins Facebook lead. I can create that tag here from within the system click on add, and it's actually going to now apply this tag to any lead that comes in off of this campaign. So you can imagine if I use that same process time after time after time, then eventually I could go create that custom audience with all of the leads that had come in from previous campaigns. In addition, you can automatically fire a smart plan when an ad comes in or lead comes in from one of your ads as well. You can do that using this second dropdown. So here are all of the smart plans that we previously downloaded to our library. However, just so that you know, if you go into the smart plan library and type in the keyword Facebook, you're gonna get several hundred smart plans that have already been created previously around Facebook ad follow-up. So take some time, go through some of those Facebook smart plans, determine which one might be best for your use and follow-up, or you could decide to create your own and then apply that smart plan after you've created it. Finally, we've got the duration and budget category where we're gonna decide how long will this ad run? Since we saved this as a draft yesterday, it takes 24 hours typically to approve. So you've got to start the ad by tomorrow at the earliest. I could run this in the future, but I could probably have to start it by December 3rd at minimum. This is now gonna run for 10 days. It's going to be a daily budget of $3 per channel you can see the minimum suggested budget is $1 per channel. I can change the campaign budget just by clicking on these pluses and minuses. And you can see if we go to $20, it's now 10 days for $2 a day for $20 total. Um, if I change this to say, maybe I only want to go through next week. Well, that's now going to be a seven day duration, which would be $2 and 86 cents per day. Best practices that I've seen seven day minimum, 30 day maximum, and again, somewhere in that one to $3 minimum per channel per day. Um, so typically the ads that I personally run, they're all 30 for 10, and that's just kind of how I do my Facebook ads. So uh, up to you to decide how you want to ultimately do that, and yet you can change that to as little as one day or as much as, I don't know, the max is, it's probably pretty long. So, uh, but that's it, once we click on save, and we've got everything filled out, we can then come in to publish the campaign. Now you're gonna see we can't publish it right now because there are some fields that we have not selected due to our channel not properly connecting. But in this case, once you had everything built out, all you would have left to do would be to publish the campaign. Leads would start coming in within about 24 hours and would continue to come in in addition to impressions and clicks. And once the leads come in, the nice thing is you're going to see that you would have a lead number down here, just below the cost per lead, and you can click on it. It would open a separate page of contacts that list out just the leads that have come in off of this ad, and you can begin to call them, apply tags, send out a bulk email, apply a smart plan, any of those types of things to begin your follow-up process with those leads. And that's it for today, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I know a little bit longer of a video, but part two of creating a paid social ad. Hopefully now you've got the basics of how to create, run the ad, and then do some automatic or manual follow-up once those leads become coming in. As always, hope you're all doing very, very well. Look forward to talking to you again soon.